he was creating a history, a myth, um, a mythology for England, he called it. And um, that involved not just a story, it involved geography, cartography, geology, ethnography, any other ography you like. Um, he had to do it all, and he did. Nerderotic.com. Not only are you patently evil if you criticize the rings of power, not only are you fascist adjacent if you criticize the rings of power. Now, criticizing the rings of power is a threat to our democracy. Funny, this article comes from The Conversation, which is a blog by Anna Small, who is professor of English literature at Mount St. Vincent University in Nova Scotia, Canada, the very same country that froze the bank accounts of Canadian trucker protesters. You know, those vile protesters with the bouncy castles, the rings of power. Every adaptation is a reinterpretation. So ignore the haters. Mount St. Vincent is a public university. Not really sure how it works out there. God, I hope the Canadian taxpayer isn't paying for this. Amazon Prime's billion dollar production of The Rings of Power. We no longer use the term Lord of the Rings before that because it has nothing to do with it, has been targeted with a flood of racist and misogynist abuse online. Before we even get started, fair warning. This article mentions the term far right eight times in what would be an eight minute read without my commentary. It also talks about misinformation. Amazon disabled the reviews for the shows. Don't you mean show? Oh my God, how embarrassing is it that a guy who got kicked out of three high schools is correcting a professor of English literature due to a review bombing when online users seek to overwhelm reviews based on political agendas. <laughs> oh my God, this is projection. And as far as having an agenda with a review, our agenda has always been very clear. Respect the lore, respect the spirit of Tolkien. Incidentally, that point of view that our reviews are filled with agenda when we're just simply pointing out theirs comes straight from the top, Jennifer Salky. Yet Amazon has long known that they were in for a rather bumpy series takeoff. They saw Tolkien fans slamming the Rings of Power online before a frame had been released. Again, because this isn't our first rodeo, please check out my top five murdered franchises video right here. You might find some similarities. We all saw this coming. There were no surprises, Salky says. None for us either. Having insight into our global audience, we also have insight into the darker sides of how people can manipulate reviews and have other points of view that we wouldn't support. They wanted to fill Tolkien with intersectionalism and have it reflect the world of Los Angeles today, and we didn't. I'm guessing they also had the global insight of their show being a giant piece of shit. Online commenters have both criticized the casting of people of color and how the story focuses on powerful women. Talk about misinformation. There are no powerful women in the rings of power. There are no women or men. There are no characters. They're just NPCs repeating and contradicting themselves. According to studio head Jennifer Salky, by the way, nice self-insert with Morphid Clark, 100 million individual people have viewed the rings of power since it was released yet there are only 23,275 reviews at time of recording and if we just go to the latest ones there is a plethora of one star reviews yet 48 percent are five star reviews and what you find very few of are four star three star and two star probably the more honest reviews sure there is review bombing on both sides. Isn't it strange how nobody brings up the positive review bombing, you know, from the company that actually has a financial stake in their show being popular? And fans don't have the power to do things like delete reviews off of IMDb, which has happened, a company that just so happens to be owned by Amazon. Oh, would you look at that? Just look at that. Oh boy, we're gonna hear from more scholars. Literature scholar Craig Franson has been researching the culture wars and neo-fascist politics in Tolkien studies. I'm sure he's fun at parties. In a podcast he hosts, oh, I've gotta mind this, with historian Danny Holtz, an expert 
in American conservatism. They discuss how online fascists use mass media to harness blockbuster culture products as in far right backlash to Amazon's rings of power. So is this expert in conservatism a conservative? Probably not. As a literature scholar who has studied Tolkien's fiction and scholarly writings, I encourage discussions of adaptations to gain a better understanding of how they respond to Tolkien's works as the world we live in today. That is academic gobbledygook bullshit. You know, there is such a thing as enjoying a story for what it is, like most people do unlike state-paid academics. But far-right commenters have tried to shut down any discussion of a new retelling that is not to their liking. Wait a minute. Mm, don't seem to find a hyperlink to any proof of any of us trying to shut down anybody liking the show. You can like it all you want. Au contraire, we're the ones you're trying to shut down. Again, this entire piece of garbage is projection. Omitting the truth is still a lie. Being disingenuous with information is still misinformation. Just playing by your rules. A better understanding of Tolkien's work and the nature of adaptations will combat some of the online disinformation and harassment campaign. Harassment campaign? Don't you mean harassment campaigns? You are an English lit professor? Tell you what, if you are currently an undergraduate thinking of going or currently going to Mount St. Vincent University in Nova Scotia, Canada, why don't you go to your nearest fireplace or barbecue and set your Canadian pesos on fire? It would be put to better use. Quote unquote faithful adaptation long before the first episode aired on September 1st. That was moved from September 2nd, the anniversary of Professor Tolkien's death here in the States. It still aired on that anniversary in his home country. Some commenters condemned the show because they assumed it would not be faithful to quote-unquote the lore, meaning the text Tolkien wrote. That so-called assumption was a very educated speculation, and we ended up being right the only thing we were wrong about was how bad it would be. Listen, do you smell those goalposts moving? There is no such thing as a faithful adaptation in all details. Yeah, no sh Sherlock. No, we wanted a faithful adaptation of everything he has written, and it would be a thousand hours long. What a fuck moron. As literary scholar Linda Hutchinson has pointed out, are you sure she's not a literal scholar, as in autism? Every adaptation is a reinterpretation of source material. Wow. These are scholars. Yeah. This is big brain time. I want you to let that sink in. These are the people teaching the youth of Canada. Far-right commenters use Tolkien as an image of the world they want to have. A male-dominated, all-white society. And they attack any other interpretations legitimate literary discussion therefore is threatened with being overwhelmed by intimidation and disinformation. Yes, I understand this article puts the re in tard, but we have to keep in mind the reason I'm bringing it to you is to show you that activists have been circling Tolkien's work for a very long time and have been waiting for a moment like this. In this way, they can influence even those fans who are new to Tolkien or ideas about adaption because they think you're all as dumb as they are. Fortunately, I do not. You have a mind of your own. Decide for yourself. Let's take a look at some of the most popular misconceptions circulating now. Let's accuse your quote-unquote enemy of what you are doing. That's precisely what this article is. Again, they try to roll out that you can't make a literal word-for-word -word adaptation of a work, and we know that. Producing an adaptation in a new medium, such as a TV show, requires a different way of telling a story compared to the print version. That argument lacks nuance, and considering that these are scholars who obviously did no research, they are being disingenuous, which again is essentially a lie by omission. 
Misinformation. In the appendices, Tolkien only briefly outlined what happened in Middle-earth before the events chronicled in The Lord of the Rings. That's exactly why Amazon chose that. And even when they had an opportunity to adapt the things that happened in the appendices, they chose to ignore it for their own intersectional original characters. Something you would know if you actually watch the show like we did. Far-right commenters like to claim they know Tolkien's mind and that he would disapprove of the Amazon adaptation because it does not represent an all-white cast of male heroes, but we simply cannot know what Tolkien would have thought of this current adaptation. That's your big own. We don't know what Professor Tolkien would have thought because he's dead. The devout Catholic who thoroughly despised the machine of industry would have been totally okay with Amazon perverting his characters. Except he mentioned something about it in a previous attempted adaptation, which probably would have been a lot closer to the Rings of Power. While discussing the use of Lembus in the script, Tolkien expresses that he would resent perversions of his characters. I do earnestly hope that in the assignment of actual speeches to the characters, they will be represented as I have presented them in style and sentiment. I should resent perversion of the characters. Another frequent claim is that Tolkien hated all adaptations, but Tolkien's criteria for approval can be summed up in his own words art or cash. In a letter to his son Christopher, Tolkien said he and his publisher Stanley Unwin had agreed on a policy of approving adaptations if either the author had a veto on objectionable features or if they were very profitable. The only thing that proves is Tolkien was a capitalist and he liked a little bit of money, which I am not going to begrudge him for. It doesn't mean he was going to like those adaptations and it doesn't mean I wouldn't. One of the far right's repeated white supremacist claims is that Tolkien was representing the European Middle Ages and therefore his characters should be white. But the Middle Ages in Europe included people of color. You don't say, as examinations of historical evidence have pointed out. And you know what? So did Tolkien. And that is one of the things that the Rings of Power completely ignored. And you would know that if you actually watch the show like we did. If death was the great underlying theme of the Lord of the Rings, what were the sources of Tolkien's special creativity? I always, in the writing, always start with a name. Give me a name and it produces a story, not the other way about, normally. I think a lot of his creativity came out of a kind of careful brooding about the history of places. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, in some ways, is a work governed by a map, and that map is a map of fantasy. But behind the map of fantasy, there is a real map of England. Helen Young, who I'm sure is an unbiased source, a literature scholar who examines race and whiteness in popular culture, explores how popular Western fantasy writers and readers assumed the good characters were white. Of course, the very unbiased literature scholar that examines race and whiteness in popular culture brings up browner hands of Samwise Gamgee, and of course, the Harfoot hobbits being browner of skin. We can all assume that probably meant Mediterranean, a darker hue, but it doesn't matter at this point, because what Amazon has on their hands is a bad TV show. It's a bad story. If it was a good story, none of this would matter. Something Anna Small, the English lit author of this article, would know if she actually watched the show. Tolkien complex attitudes to race. Tolkien's attitudes to race and racism were complex. As literary scholar Dimitri Femi explains, although Tolkien made statements against racism and anti-Semitism in his letters, he based his work on racist hierarchies and medieval racial stereotypes. You mean history. So they point out correctly that Tolkien called out racism and anti-Semitism, yet they still call him a racist. Too much emphasis on women? Even before the episode aired, some commenters repeatedly complained about Warrior Galadriel. Wonder where they got that from. Based on promotional photos, many expected to see the ethereal lady of Peter Jackson's movies and J.R.R. Tolkien's books, or simply hated her image as a female military leader. No, I hated this image of Galadriel sitting like a dude. So there isn't too much of an emphasis on women because they don't exist in this story. There's too much of an emphasis on superficial aspects like girl bosses, 
skin color, modern messaging, and allegory. The one thing Tolkien wasn't was superficial. Kind of like this trash article. This book says, talking in a very advanced critical language, that uh, The Lord of the Rings is overcoded because the megatext has to be constantly explained. Well, leave that aside. But it goes on to say, nor are the histories and genealogies in the least necessary to the narrative, but they have given much infantile happiness to the Tolkien clubs and societies. Well, that's just, that's just name-calling, infantile happiness. But when uh, somebody says the histories and genealogies are not in the least necessary to the narrative, now that's dead wrong. That's not only wrong, that's stupidly wrong. Actually, what they give to the narrative is something which Tolkien was very aware of and which he often talked and wrote about and which he valued very much, and that is depth. So you don't just have, as it were, a flat, garish, shiny surface. You have something which has depth behind it. But this current adaptation portrays the younger Galadriel. No, she is a full-grown adult. Elves come of age between 50 and 100 years, and she's already thousands of years old. That Tolkien hinted in some versions. Versions that Amazon doesn't have the rights to. Ambitious, athletic, and a fierce fighter. I don't recall the word fighter ever being used. Contrary to far-right expectations that an epic story should praise white male heroes, Rings of Power puts women at the center in every storyline without eliminating male characters and warriors. And how has that worked out for them? This is where they bring it home, ladies and gentlemen, and tell you that criticizing the Rings of Power could be a threat to our democracy. Productive questions. Tolkien is not above negative criticism, neither is any adaptation. We can ask productive questions about the purpose and methods of adaptation and the corporation funding it. Good, we can agree on that. Tolkien readers hold a broad range of views and they won't all agree when discussing their creative choices in this particular adaptation. That's exactly what I've been doing. But prejudicing it based on far-right talking points harms people, weakens our democratic social discourse, and will not lead to a better understanding of adaptation. We must certainly draw the line at engaging with racist and misogynist disinformation and abuse. When you can't win your argument in the marketplace of ideas, just accuse your opponent of being a racist or a white supremacist. Just look at these tags. Fandom, white supremacy, critical race, J.R.R. Tolkien, far-right groups. And the one thing this article didn't mention was any actual aspects of the plot of Rings of Power because they clearly didn't watch it. The scholars' research on this article consisted of Amazon's promotional material and Twitter. Yes, the Rings of Power turned out to be a big battle in the culture war, one the activists lost. And they should be embarrassed, along with Amazon. Especially with House of the Dragon, a show I was completely down on until it came out. They were able to school Amazon's The Rings of Power with a battle between children in a cave. I'm sure I speak for all of the fandom when we say we would have much rather had a good Lord of the Rings show that's in the spirit of Tolkien, but that didn't happen. Still, the Tolkien fandom brought home a victory and the shills, the activists and Amazon took a massive L. If you like what you heard, please like, share and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I'll see you in the next video. Nerderotic.com. Cast it into the fire.